Hey guys, it's Barry here from Barry's Tutoring. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to go through a question involving graphs. So uh, the question starts here and obviously the graphs are um, in the stimulus, which is not shown yet. But let's just look at the uh, question stem first. So the greatest biomass of both perch and pike occurred in the North Basin in 1962. The ratio of biomass of perch and biomass of pike in 1962 was closest to two. So they're asking us to calculate a ratio. So let's write down the ratio. While they've already done this, it's, good ha uh, it's a good habit to get into. Okay, biomass of perch in 1962. Oops, this is the biomass of pike. I can't write, but you get the idea. Okay, the biomass of pike and the biomass of perch in 1962. So let's quickly go ahead and have a look. Oops. Yep, so here, figure two, this is showing us the numbers and the biomass of perch in the north and the south basin over time. And in figure one, this is showing us the biomass and the numbers of pike over time in the north and the south basin. So let's go back to the question first. Now, I just want to draw to your attention the fact that in the first sentence, it mentions the north basin. But in the actual question where it starts, the ratio of biomass of perch, blah, 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 it, it actually doesn't make a distinction about if you should be looking at the north or the south basin. So it really implies that we should be looking at both in total. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So let's have a look at the biomass of perch in 1962. Let's do this one by one. We get the numbers, we put it into our ratio. So figure two, if we look at the biomass in tons, okay, take note of the units. 1962, it looks like it's about 100 tons roughly and if you go to the south it looks like it's about 170 okay so we've got 100 tons and 170 so we have a total of 270 tons let's write that down 270 tons okay now we have to look at the biomass of pike in 1962. In the North Basin, it looks like it's about... Yeah, let's just say 2000, just to make our numbers a bit easier. Okay, it looks like it's about... Um, uh, no, actually, let's say 1800. Okay, so it's about 1800. And in the South, it looks like it's about 3,600. Okay, it's good to actually write things down, by the way. Uh, so just a really quick tip. Our working memory, okay, so for example, holding uh, bits of information like numbers in our head can actually deteriorate when we're tired or if we're overwhelmed. And the GAMSAT uh, is gonna do that to you. It's, it's gonna overwhelm you with lots of information. It's gonna make you tired. Your brain's not gonna function at, it, at 100%. So you do not want to uh, test your working memory too much. So writing the numbers down so that they're on paper means that you're less likely to make silly mistakes. Okay, so if we put these together, it looks like we'll have 5,400. And it's 5,400 kilograms. Okay, so the units are really important. You will see 5,400 kilograms. All right, so the first issue here is we need to make sure that the units are consistent before we um, simplify this ratio. So I know that every 1,000 kilograms is a ton. So I'm just going to divide 5,400 uh, 5, by 1,000. And I know that's just moving the decimal place and it will just be 5.4 tons. This makes it a lot easier for me to now uh, to simplify this okay so what can we do 
what we could do is I could make 5.4 tons to 6. I'm just going to going to approximate it and I'll leave the 270. Okay, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. You just kind of, uh, you get a feel um, if you practice more with these type of things. So what I can do straight away, and you can do this with all ratios, is you can divide or multiply both sides by the same number. An easy thing that we can do here is to halve both sides. So half of 6 is 3, and half of 270 is 135. Okay, 135. Okay, so we can obviously divide 3 by 3, and that's going to give us 1. But if we want to divide 135 by 3, and if you don't want to do long division, is to think to yourself, what is a number that's easily divided by 3 and gets pretty close to 135? So for me, I'm thinking 120. So 120 divided by 3, I know that's 40, okay, because I know that 12 divided by 3 is 4. And how much left do we have? Well, we have 15 left. So I've essentially broken that into two fractions because I know that these will add up together. And these are also much easier sums to do separately. So I know it's 40 plus 5. So it's 45. Okay, so the answer uh, to my question is about 45 to 1. And if we have a look, the closest answer is C. Okay. Now, if you notice, we had to correct for the units earlier. And if we hadn't corrected for the units, then we would have made a mistake and we would have gotten the wrong answer. So I want to show you what could have happened if you made some simple mistakes. And it shows just how savvy the question writers are. So you have to be very careful. So let's say I forgot to convert and I had 5,400 kilograms and I proceeded to use this ratio instead and just to, um, to simplify. Okay, so first of all, we could get rid of one of the zeros. It's good practice, it's essentially dividing both sides by 10, and we get 27 and 54 and zero. And then what we could do um, to make things a bit easier for ourselves, perhaps you could say it's uh, 550 and 25. Okay, so I'm changing the numbers slightly, and it's because I know that even though I've changed it slightly, these are a lot uh, these will be a lot easier to deal with because I know that 25 divided by 5 is 5 and I also know that 555 divided by 5 is 110 so it just makes our life a little bit easier and if we keep on going and I've divided both sides by 5 now I get 1 on that side and I can see, now you can even round this, I know that 110 is pretty close to 100 and 100 divided by 5 is 20. So you can see that this is going to be approximately 1 to 20. So that's this answer over here. Okay, 1 to 20. Alright. Let's just get rid of this. I'll show you another thing that could have happened as well. So let's just really, really quickly write this. How could this have happened? This would have happened if we just made a silly mistake and we forgot about units. Okay, so units are really, really important. Good takeaway message from here. Now, if we went back and instead of initially looking at the biomass of perch and we looked at the, the numbers by accident, what would have happened? 1962, have a quick read. It's about 1.5 and 3.5. So 1.5 and 3.5, and you notice that the scale is in millions. So this is 5 million. Okay, so instead we have 5 million, six zeros. And let's go up to have a look at the number of pike. 1962. That looks like about 1,400. Go up again to the south. That looks like about 2,400. So it's about 3,800. 
3,800. Let's write it down, 3,800. Okay, so this is what we could have got instead if we either misread or we just forgot. So we can start by getting rid of a couple of zeros and you're essentially dividing by 100, with both sides, and we get 50,238. Now, I don't know how to divide 50,000 by 38, so I'm gonna round 38 by 40 just to make my life a bit easier. And straight away, it means I can divide both sides by 10 again. So effectively just get rid of a zero from both sides and we get 5,000 to four. Again, an easy thing you can do is to half both sides. Since these are even numbers, you can half four to two and 5,000 to 2,500. And then if you halve again, you get one on that side and you get 1,250, which is pretty close to 1,300. So you can kind of see why that option was there. Okay, so that was there if you read the numbers by accident. So you read the wrong graph. Okay, so hopefully, um, hopefully I've showed you today a, a few things uh, that are kind of helpful to keep note of. Wording is really important. Uh, making sure you're reading the right graph, obviously. Taking care with your units. So make sure that even though you're reading off uh, multiple graphs from the same question, make sure that they are in the same units. And if they're not, you need to account for that. So you need to do some unit conversions. And I've also shown you hopefully a couple of uh, uh, tips on how to manipulate and deal with ratios. Okay, um, if you'd like some more guidance with your GAMSAT preparation, some last minute tips for May if you're sitting it in uh, 2020, uh, then feel free to check out my courses on Teachable, on the Teachable website. Um, and if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. Thank you. I'll see you next time.